The weather is about to take a serious turn as the tropics are heating up extremely quickly with two hurricanes likely in the Atlantic Ocean by the beginning of next week, and at least one of these could impact the United States. Additionally, severe weather is possible today and tomorrow for over 100 million people, including a risk for damaging winds and an isolated tornado threat. Lastly, a huge heat wave is on the horizon and temperatures are about to skyrocket again across much of the United States. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that will be impacting the United States over the next seven days. And we'll begin with what's happening across the country today. And right now we have showers and thunderstorms that have lined up all the way from Texas into the Northeast. And we had a severe weather event take place yesterday that very well underperformed. We had nothing in the way of tornadoes. However, we did have some damaging winds and hail across parts of Arkansas, Texas, Oklahoma, even back into Tennessee. The good news is, is that I'm not expecting anything too significant when it comes to severe weather today today or tomorrow. Unfortunately, though, we do have a low pressure system that is going to continue to spew the potential for at least isolated severe weather today and tomorrow for over 100 million people. And we'll talk more about that here in a moment. The other nice thing that's coming out of this, though, is the amount of rainfall that is coming out of it. We have a lot of drought right now across the Ohio Valley and even back into the lower Mississippi River Valley. So this is going to help the drought situation substantially. Anywhere off to the north and west of this low pressure system, it is extremely quiet right now. We have nothing going on along the west coast and even across the midwest and the northern plains things are quiet for the time being and i really do not anticipate that changing much over the next few days now you know it's serious when i'm talking about the tropics only about a minute into the video because we actually have three different areas that we are keeping an eye on right now in the atlantic ocean one of which is hurricane gabriel good news is that this is moving away from the united states but if you're over in the azores islands or have interest there there will be a potential for tropical storm to hurricane impacts as we go into tomorrow and as well as friday but this is really the big talk right now. We got two areas of development in the Western Atlantic Ocean, and it does appear as if at least one of these may impact the United States. When we have these red areas outlined, that means that there is a high probability of development within the next five to seven days. And I do think we are at least going to see this area of development here become our next tropical storm, which the next name in line is Humberto. After that is Imelda, and this would be the area that we'd have to watch for that next name storm. And this one could impact the United States. Over the next few days, it'll move over the greater Antilles towards the Bahamas and most computer models are indicating that by the weekend we will have a tropical storm in the Bahamas area and then eventually this would track to the north the highest likelihood right now is that this would track somewhere towards the Carolinas maybe just staying off the coast of Florida and it may even make landfall in the United States so over the next few minutes we're going to talk about all the different scenarios and why this could be one of the craziest things that we've ever seen because at some point at the beginning of next week we could literally have two hurricanes next to each other which could create something called the Fujiwara effect. And speaking of the Fujiwara effect, I want to talk more about what that exactly means because there's a pretty good chance that two different tropical storms are going to form within a few hundred miles of each other. So let's talk more about what that actually is. So as we go into Friday and Saturday, the European model is currently hinting that a hurricane and potentially even a major hurricane will form off to the north of the Lesser Antilles. This is going to be Saturday night. Over here, just off the coast of Florida, is where we may have a tropical storm developing, which is that other red area of interest and right now that area of interest is over Puerto Rico which on infrared imagery does not look very impressive this is going to take a few days to develop so I do think our next name storm will likely be this disturbance which will be far away from the United States as we go into Sunday into Monday look how close this tropical storm gets over near Florida and the Carolinas this is very 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 close to actually impacting the country if not it could even impact the east coast this right here is a very intense hurricane off to the north of Puerto Rico now you'll notice the distance between these two storms is very very, very small. So by the time we go into Tuesday into Wednesday, the European model kind of goes a little crazy and almost has two different hurricanes here merge into one. And this is what we kind of call the Fujiwara effect, which is when two low pressure systems try to combine into one. The last time we've had this happen with any hurricane was actually Hurricane Helene last year when Hurricane Helene came up into the United States and another low pressure system basically absorbed it and it became one low pressure system. Now, in this case, we do not have that happening here, but we do have two hurricanes hurricanes that are in the Atlantic Ocean. Now, will this exact scenario happen? And will we have a hurricane near the United States? That is not a guarantee as of right now. And this is honestly going to probably be the trickiest hurricane forecast that we've had in a long time. I really do not think this is going to be an easy forecast, assuming both of these tropical waves develop into at least tropical storms. The distance between them is going to really create a really weird pull in the Atlantic Ocean where they could go a lot of different ways. And you can see how this is almost a hurricane by the time it gets to 
South Carolina by Monday, and then eventually as we go into Tuesday, it kind of slingshots out into the Atlantic Ocean, which is entirely a possibility. So this is going to be a very tricky forecast. This is obviously not what's going to exactly happen. We're going to go more in detail about the scenarios that could evolve, and if one does not form, what will exactly happen? Now, I do want to begin by talking about our spaghetti models, which basically shows us the different scenarios that could evolve with either tropical system. Now, this is not a slam dunk forecast where both of them are going to develop. One of them may not develop, and there's different things that could happen based off that. First off, I do think the eastern tropical wave, which is off to the east of the Lesser Antilles, will likely become our next tropical storm, and almost undoubtedly a hurricane just to the south of Bermuda. Now, from there, it will likely continue to track to the north and northwest, and then eventually turn out to sea, but this is the other kicker. It's going to be this disturbance right here. If we do end up seeing the tropical wave that is currently over Puerto Rico form, which I would say right now has about a 70% chance of at least becoming a tropical storm, but a hurricane is a little bit less likely with this disturbance, there is a possibility that we could have some impacts towards the United States. Now, the European ensemble members here, which is, again, all the different plotted models, kind of show a split between it being more of a fish storm or being more of something that we need to watch for near Florida or even back over near the Carolinas. Nonetheless, it's going to be hard to pinpoint what's exactly going to happen with either tropical wave until they form. This one is much closer to becoming a tropical system than this one. This is just a couple of thunderstorms right now. So the center of circulation could change very easily as it forms and as it moves to the northwest, which is why right now this is a very tricky tropical wave to forecast, but we definitely need to keep an eye on this if you're along the east coast of the United States. We are going to have daily forecasts talking all about this, assuming things continue to change and assuming that we actually have a problem on our hands in the United States, because this right here could be our first legit tropical storm or hurricane threat in the United States this year. And this is our latest run from the European Ensemble members, just giving you an idea of all the different scenarios that could evolve with both tropical waves and all this green basically are different areas of circulations with all sorts of models that are plotted onto this. So again, there is a wide variety of scenarios that could evolve. It is going to be a very interesting next few days to say the least, because if we were to see both of these develop, we could literally see one of the craziest tropical system things that we've seen in quite some time. I have never seen something like this in the last five years or so, where we've had two different hurricanes trying to develop right next to each other. So we definitely need to watch this very closely. Now, switching gears to our threat of severe weather over the next few days, beginning with today, which is Wednesday, and the Storm Prediction Center has a marginal threat of severe weather from Kentucky back through the Gulf Coast for about 40 million people, where the biggest concern for today will be isolated damaging winds. I also wouldn't rule out an isolated brief tornado somewhere up here in the Ohio Valley. So stay weather aware and have multiple ways to receive warnings. On Thursday, the threat of severe weather will shift to the East Coast, where over 70 million people are at threat for damaging winds. Anywhere from the Gulf Coast all the way back into southern New England, wouldn't be surprised if we saw an isolated tornado risk evolve somewhere along the East Coast, maybe from Virginia back into Massachusetts. But generally speaking, the risk is very low. Just have ways to receive warnings. So here's the timing of severe weather beginning with today, which will have lots of rain out there throughout the daytime today. Too much convection really to have much of a legit tornado risk, but there will likely at least be some isolated damaging winds. Peak severe weather threat here across the Ohio Valley will be between 3 and 7 o'clock. By 9 to 10 o'clock tonight, we're really kind of done with the severe weather aspect of things, and a lot of rain will continue, which will help the drought situation. And then by tomorrow afternoon, things are drying out across the Midwest, but some pop-up showers and isolated rumbles of thunder will be possible from Indiana all the way back over into Georgia. Back along the East Coast, as we go into Thursday, some isolated damaging winds and maybe a little bit of sporadic change-sized hail as possible throughout the afternoon. Wouldn't rule out a brief tornado risk somewhere back up in the Northeast, maybe even something near the Appalachian Mountains, but really nothing too crazy to write home about with tomorrow's threat of severe weather. And then back over in the Southeast, we got one round of storms today, which will be mainly a wind threat across Mississippi and Louisiana. Might even see a small slight risk of severe weather introduced for a more localized area of higher damaging wind potential. And then as we go into Thursday, there will be some scattered showers and thunderstorms across Alabama, Florida, and Georgia, with again, isolated wind being the main concern. Now, I know a lot of you are enjoying the nice cooler weather that has been rolling in behind this big storm system with a little cold front moving across the Southern Plains and the Ohio Valley. However, it is not going to last because as we go into next week, we got heat building across the Northern Plains, the Midwest, the Ohio Valley. The only area that might feel a little bit cooler will be back over in the Central and Southern Plains, mainly though over in the High Plains. But generally speaking, it looks like it's going to be a fairly warm end of September and even beginning of October. No big signs of relief are on the horizon. And the Climate Prediction Center right now does indicate that there is a high likelihood that we are going to see above average temperatures for the very end of September and also to begin October. So no signs of winter on the horizon other than the snow that we saw yesterday over
over in the west side of Denver, Colorado, back over in the higher elevations. Many mountainous regions actually picked up four to eight inches of snow. However, we are not expecting that anywhere else in the United States for the foreseeable future. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. Our next video will likely be tomorrow, so click the bell icon so you're notified with the latest updates. This is the first time in a while that we've had four consecutive days of videos. That is just kind of giving you an idea that the weather is getting active again, and it looks like it is going to stay active with the tropics heating up very quickly. So stay tuned. We'll see you guys all again in the next video or live stream.